gonna be fake. Hello, welcome to the Cardmonger channel. This is Jamin. I'm Card Stubble. We're in the round three of a modern tournament. It happened some time ago. It doesn't matter. We have kind of stuff. We have action and we have subscription. You need to do Skype. My boss needs to do Skype. Everybody needs to do Skype. Let's go to the game. Woo! All right, let's go to the game. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a wrap. Wow. All right, after this is that, very, that was something. <laughs> that was an intro. We're watching Four Color Elementals still facing up against Amulet Titan. Uh, Four Color Elementals kind of the main deck of modern at the moment. After the Lurus ban, you know, everyone expected, oh, no more companions, but no, we're back with more companions, Yorian, 80 card decks, and a lot of value with Elementals. Yeah, if you ever have the decision between like, buying one of those decks or an actual house. And you think it's very close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can go for the four color elemental Yorion list. All right, and we see both decks. <laughs> one deck is aiming for mana quantity. Oh. One deck is aiming for mana quality. Yeah, very good. I mean, Piotr is only one card from Unoing away. Yeah. Um, Anton <laughs> taking one mana to, you know, generate mana of any color, whereas Canister takes one mana to put in an additional land and then Azusa and things go crazy. <laughs> Anton checking the backside of the Hanwar Battlements, not very informative as it only <laughs> contains the artwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, also the backside is actually unreachable it, in this case. It is unreachable in this deck, even though like if you haven't played against Hanover Battlements, it's kind of weird, like, okay, uh, let me check the backside of the card. Oh, it doesn't tell me anything that's going on. To be fair, technically, you could get to the backside of it. Just saying. But yeah. that's, a, that's a riddle for all of you to figure out. Ooh, prismatic ending. Uh, prismatic ending taking out the treasure map. And not treasure map. What's it called? Expedition. Expedition map. Uh, basically the only reasonable target right now. Although you could have saved uh, the prismatic ending expecting a an amulet to come down at some point. Yeah, but probably at the turn where the amulet comes down, you have a lot of problems anyway. So yeah. I, I can see the expedition map causing 100% of the problems if you don't remove it now instead of just waiting for something to happen. Yeah, I agree. Um, if, if the amulet came down on turn one, of course you would be much happier to hit the amulet, but as it stands, it's still interacting in some way. Because, you know, once again, you don't interact with lands that easily. Uh, you don't interact with the enters the battlefield trigger of Titan that easily. So, you know, taking the interaction where Anton can get it makes sense. As now there is a Summoner's Pact on the stack, uh, which I assume that Titan will be entering the battlefield very soon, and that might just make, uh, you know, quick work of Anton. Yes, another land does come down. Primeval Titan enters the battlefield. In response, there's an Eladamri's call, probably to get a Solitude. Is there, is there, uh, what's the other one? The blue one? Yeah. Um, subtlety? Subtlety. Uh, if there is a subtlety, that might also be the choice, but I don't think there is. Would subtlety counter the Titan? It would put it back on top. Yeah. Is so, that good? <laughs> I mean, depends on the rest of your hand, the rest of your game plan. But Anton there, does pull up the solitude to the front of his deck. There is actually one subtlety. Yeah, there is. So, yeah. Anton also considering it. You can see the blue card peeking out of the deck. Getting subtlety. Okay, so that means you're kind of postponing this for a very expensive price of two cards. Yeah, two cards postponing it only for one turn. Um, now, there are a few ways to really get out of this, like milling, like setting up a hard counter for next turn. Field of Ruin would be very good. Yeah, shuffling away, true. Maybe even better than milling. But let's see if Anton has any of those ways available. Sacred Foundry, shocking. Oh, that, that's an Omnath. That's mm -hmm. not countering the Titan next turn. Yeah. Ah, okay. Actually, yeah, we forgot about that. But you need to pay for the Pact. You do. 
It's, you know, it's, uh, it's good that we didn't play because we yeah, would have lost the game. We would have <laughs> lost the game. <laughs> Move to main and lose the game. All right, so there's actually one more turn, which is quite important. With quite important now. and also quite the difference between what we thought would happen and what, what's actually happening. So uh, shout outs to Anton for, you know, playing this game correctly. Um, and if Omneth can do one thing, is it can make explosive turns. Yeah. Um, lands entering the battlefield left and right, producing mana, sweeping boards, stuff like that. I mean, resolving a Titan with or without an Azusa can make all the difference because uh, Azusa can you know generate a lot of mana if you have an amulet, amulet and stuff. So if Omneth manages to wrath the board this turn, that might make a huge difference. And then also we'll see what Anton can do with all the additional mana because right now Anton has Five mana floating. No, four mana. Never mind. Sorry. Now, four mana is all right, but cycling a triumph does not get you there. No, but you're kind of fetching for a few answers in your 80 card deck. Yeah, and now Anton only with four lands in hand. A Boreal Grazer chump blocking on that, and. Yeah, no action for Anton, so that Primeval Titan will resolve. Yeah, and that's, as we say in the business, not good. Not good, yeah, that's a very business-like term. Yeah. I mean, you can use a lot of other phrases, but not good really. Yeah, it drives the point it. home. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I totally agree. Canister pondering his options. Um, Obviously, a card that needs to be on his mind is Solitude, as the deck, you know, the Elementals deck plays four of those, and uh, Canister is very much aware of that. Solitude, of course, a great combo with Ephemerate, that's also in the deck. Um, in this case, though, Anton not having access to any of this, so Canister's Pondering might just be... There is at least a Telegraph of something happening, because Anton could have brought back Yorion for three mana. Yeah. At Which the same time, does have some missed opportunity cost because he can't cast it. Yeah, but wouldn't you rather cycle the trial to find solitude? Mm, I don't know. Yorion draws two next turn. That's lightning bolt. Yeah. Not gonna do it. You could lightning bolt Azusa. Yeah, that's. Yeah, all right. Lightning bolting Azusa once again. Anton taking the interaction where he can get it. First taking out the expedition map. Now lightning bolting Azusa. That doesn't deal with the main threat that Piotr is presenting right now, which is, you know, uh, just recursive primeval titans, probably fetching um, Tolaria West alongside. The, the way this lined up is that the battlements is in play, so it can't be fetched. Uh, usually you would go that if you have a uh, your amulet in play, but there's this. But you can actually return it uh, and then play it again next turn. So mm. if Azusa would have stayed on the battlefield, you could have returned two lands that make red and this. Yeah, but you don't have the you don't have any red lands, do you? No, no, not. And the red land that would bounce actually wouldn't have worked because yeah, because there's no amulet in play. Oh, Poseidon. Poseidon returned to hand. You know, canister filling his hand up with utility. Now, abundant growth. That's a redraw. <laughs> Uh, and we'll see how much... It's also triple redraw. If you don't find anything... You can put Yorin into your hand. And play, right? Yeah. You have... Yeah, you have a lot of mana. You have two, four, five, six, ten mana in total. So that would even leave you with two additional mana. But of course, uh, the permanents only come back into play. That The permanents that Yorin exiled only come back into play at end of turn. So you would only draw those at end of turn, but still, finding a solitude there would be huge. Buzeju, unfortunately, doesn't do anything. Nope. Even though it reads destroy non-basic right now, it's not relevant anymore. Okay, well. Nothing more left than just actually casting Orion. Did I miss a mana? I think... He no, no, it's correct. The, the, the abundant growth oh, yeah, true. was minus one. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, wait, yeah. yeah the, the, turn, the turn has been passed, and that's three redraws. And one from the Omnach. Yeah. 
Ooh, double fury. That double actually kills fury. Titan if you could pitch them. Yeah, you can. I guess. I guess you do have to. Do, next turn, you will have enough mana uh, to cast both of them between Omneth and your land. But when we reach that point, Canister probably has achieved a whole lot on his turn. The good part is that you're kind of safe against the Dryad, even though then you have to use the two Furies. Um, yeah, but you can't evoke them at instant speed. They don't have flash. You're joking. Don't they all have flash? Uh, I'm almost certain that Fury does not have flash. I, I, I have not interacted with Fury a lot of times. Yeah, no, it, it only has double strike. Wow, that's no flash. surprising. All right, Primeval Titan triggers. Uh, there is there there is a Dryad in hand. Uh, there is a Summoner's Pact in hand for Canister. So fetching Dryad and then fetching Valakut would have been my line of play. That being said, I have not played this deck for a whole lot, so uh, I'm not gonna go out on like I'm not gonna pretend like I know better than someone who has played this deck a bunch. Um, fetching double bounce lands. I'm interested in what the plan is. Uh, maybe the plan is to just get a second Titan. Yeah, but is there a Tolaria West in Canister's hand? There's a Pact, I think. Oh yeah, true. Right, yes. Yeah. Also, no blocks from Anton, valuing his Omneth very highly. Reasonable. You need the mana. Yeah. Ah. Of course, Cultivator Colossus. The new edition. Yeah. Yeah, we forgot about it. Yep, uh, that's a seven mana XX where X is the amount of lands you control. And when it enters the battlefield, you may repeat the following process any amount of times or as long as you can. Put a land into play and then draw a card. And it's very handsome that you just re return two lands. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, of note, this cultivator, this trigger from Cultivator Colossus has to resolve fully before anything else can enter the stack. That means the bounce lands enter now, but they only bounce after the trigger has been resolved fully. And oh my god, look at the flow of lands coming off the top of Canister's library. So what this means in like idiot terms is that you basically switch all the lands in your hand with spells. Yep, and you also put any lands you hit on the way into play too. So now currently there are three bounce land triggers on the stack. There's also an amulet already uh, being picked up by Canister, so he can produce two mana if he still has a land drop remaining, which I think he does. I like the kind of cycling version of Vesuva where you, it copies a bounce land so it returns to hand, so it's yeah. as you just never played it, but you actually play it. It's like... All right, and then of course the last bounce trigger. Returning to the area west as a mean to get another summoner pack later on. And now, uh, it's a canister has to hope that Anton does not do anything terrible during his turn, right? Because once you untap, you have a bazillion mana, you have a lot of resources in hand. What's really gonna go wrong? But We'll have to see what Anton does during his turn. Canister plays his land, taps it, and now is deciding which one to bounce. Obviously, um, with the amulet being deployed, um, growth, chamber, growth Chamber untaps once upon being played. And bounces itself, casts a grazer, so still has one mana floating. Another growth chamber makes for three mana floating. And now at this point he could cycle to Laria West or he drew the Dryad and that's huge because now every land drop deals three damage. Um, and there even is another land drop remaining. Vesuva can copy a bounce land. No, never mind. It copies Valakut in response. No, there is no response, but in response to the Valakut triggers, the first Valakut gets taken out. So, but both still trigger. Both trigger. And you, technically, there should have been targets before any of this happens. 
So the reason is that the copying is not a target, yes. Yeah. Playing the land is not a thing that enters the stack. So if Anton wanted to prevent Valakut from being active, he needed to respond to the Dryad of the Yelson Grove um, by taking out the Valakut. <laughs> but now it actually puts a mountain into play. <laughs> yeah, true. That's very unfortunate. Um, maybe also just taking out the Dryad with the Boseju would have been a line of play. It, it always enters untapped, if I'm not mistaken. Thunder yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, taking out the Dryad might have been the better target for the Boseju for this turn, because that you know prevents the Valakuts from doing things altogether. Also taking away the additional land drop, unless, I mean, it's, it's already been done. Explore now gets us another land drop, but only a single Boseju in play now, uh, a single Valakut. So that's another three damage for the Yorian, and that leaves Anton with no board, but a bunch of mana to untap. Pretty good. Pretty good, but Canister's board state looks even better with even no, more mana. Yeah, I meant Aww. the left side of the battlefield. I thought you showed at least some respect to the four color elementals deck here. Nah. No, no respect for that deck. Ice Fang Quartle, nice card, but not very good right now. Ren and six, one damage looking mighty weak in comparison to that two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fourteen cultivator colossus with trample. That drew ten cards or so. Yeah. <laughs> Wild card, and here we really saw the power of Cultivator Colossus take over the game. You know, that kind of mid-range backup game plan. So let's look at what Anton is sideboarding. <laughs> just kidding, he plays an 80 card deck. Yeah, Who needs a sideboard? <laughs> Who needs a sideboard? Uh, Yorian still remains in the sideboard, as we can see. Who would? One Magus of the Moon. Well, that actually multiplies by four. Well, actually five then, because you have the... Eladamri's Call, who can look for them. Madeline Mage, fine. That's kind of it. Force of Vega can remove the amulet, but that's not great. Yeah, the one of tutor targets do seem pretty strong. I mean, it's, it's necessary when you play an 80 card deck to sideboard things in that you can access in multiple ways. Um, let's see how the early turns shake out here. As we do see a Risen Reef in Anton's hand, we see a Prismatic Ending that could take out any potential early Emulate we, emulate, we see an unholy heat that might be able to uh, take out Titan later on, unless there is a Bajuka Bog coming from <laughs> Canister. <laughs> Fridge lands, yeah. Once again, we see Crumbling Vestige uh, be used with its Enters the Battlefield trigger to produce green mana to cast Explore, giving Canister another land drop for the turn. Um, <laughs> your land drops are surprisingly difficult with this deck. Well, every land you play needs to be carefully planned out what you want to have in hand, what you want to use the mana for. Yeah, like every in this case, it, it's a real decision whether to balance the Crumbling Vestige or the Teleria West, right? Yep. Ooh. Risen Reef, triggering, finding a forest, putting it into play tab. And now, if there is a follow-up elemental, the Risen Reef train can, tra train can really get going and generate a lot of value. Choo -choo. Choo -choo. Though we already know about the uh, solitude in Anton's hand, so if that, you know, that also triggers the Risen Reef. As it stands, the Dryad of the Elson Grove is coming down, and I assume that will get hit with a uh, solitude at some point, unless Anton's draw changes things. Yeah, because as it stands, I don't think you can let Canister untap with an additional land drop. All right. So in this case, Anton chooses to go for the Prismatic Ending, followed up by a Meddling Mage. I was wondering what that card is, and it looks like Meddling Mage. No, once again. But it's like an altar. That's why it's so weird. <laughs> Obviously, on Card Market, you can also find altars. Link is in the description below. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> You're indeed not a lawyer, and I'm not. <laughs> but you can find altars on card market. Very, very true. All right, uh, I doubt that that meddling mage was naming 
A tireless tracker, I assume it names Primeval Titan. As now we see Card Market's beautiful clues, which you can purchase on cardmarket.com slash magic slash products or something like that. It's it's in the top left there's a Actually, product Actually Comicro. Icon. Yeah, true. You can purchase them at Comicro too. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hashtag not a lawyer. And oh my god, that amount of clues is outrageous. Azusa just, it's not clues anymore if you just tell them the solution yeah. to the riddle. <laughs> like, it's Azusa, like a Sudoku that comes half filled. Yeah, like Azusa just filling in all the blanks. Yeah. And the meddling mage looking mighty meh. Guess a number between 1 and 10. Can you give me a clue? <laughs> it's not 7. <laughs> Can you give me a clue? It's not 8. <laughs> What was it? Seven. But you... Uh, uh, uh. Most importantly, by the way, here, Anton spending both of his white cards during his past turn made him unable to take care of the tireless tracker in response to the Azusa. Otherwise, um, Solitude could have easily taken out the tracker. But as it stands, uh, Canister now sitting pretty on three clues and hopefully enough information to solve the riddle for him. Yeah, again, another impressive display of just outvaluing the opponent's deck with some means of weird, no, not a weird card, but it's like something that is not your main game plan, but you just happen to have, right? And it, it, that's like one of the powerful game plans that combo decks get to pull off, where your opponent sideboards for a combo deck and then suddenly you don't combo. You just play the value game. You just play the mid-range beatdown game, whatever suits your deck. If you've got a combo deck that can pull off this kind of gameplay, you will lose much fewer percentages in games two and three, because usually after boarding your combo is a lot weaker. So like regular combo decks don't have that game plan and just become weaker in games two and three. But yeah, with this kind of backup game plan, you, you're much stronger post sideboard. Word. All right, all of this happening during the draw step where Urza Saga is taking up to three, creating Construct Token. Construct Tokens and Clue Tokens also kind of nicely synergizing, uh, pumping up the Construct while it's attacking and then cracking them afterwards to refuel your hand. Urza Saga also putting another artifact into play. It's all shaping up nicely. For everybody who frantically wants to post in the comments, but Urza Saga triggers on the main phase, not the draw uh, step. Yeah. You're obviously correct and you should still do that Teach Jamin a lesson. Yeah, please. Please do tell me about all my shortcomings in regards, only in regards to sagas, not all the other ones. I mean, life didn't, certainly didn't. <laughs> Good. The problem is that once Titan is like forbidden, you kind of have to stumble around a little bit of the other means of your deck, which takes some time. Right? <laughs> but you, you can see here, Canister doesn't really care about Titan being forbidden. He cares more about the Risen Reef generating value with yeah. the Solitude. Because Canister has plenty of value, whereas Anton is sitting on five mana, <laughs> scrambling to somehow, you know, generate card advantage, interact. There's an Endurance and a Planes in hand. You can't even cast Yari on this turn, which would take out the Azusa by flickering Solitude. There's not a lot going on. Like, uh, But you have to buy Yari now. Uh, yeah, you have to. Endurance is also not doing a lot, so what are you really doing? You're not... Yeah, I mean, you're still protected against Titan at this very moment, but that might fade away any second now if there's a Dryad of the Elson Grove enabling the Valakut, and then Valakut can just shoot the Meddling Mage. Kind of weird. Also, you have two clues laying around. I really hope he boarded an Emrakul. <laughs> Oh, another Saga. Another Saga obviously playing well into the value game where, yeah, you just outvalue your opponent with Construct Tokens, but there is the Dryad, so that Valakut triggers, it'll shoot the Meddling Mage. So from now on, any Primeval Titan that gets picked up is big game, and I assume... Wait, oh yeah, we do have an extra land drop, never mind. We have three extra land drops. Yeah, we do. Just. Put your hand onto the table. Um, any drawn Primeval Titan is game. If you draw a bounce land, you can have basically fulfill all your land drops. And Canister not showing us the cards, but still heading into the red zone for one damage. Oh. Oh no. Nom nom oh. nom. That gets eaten up. 
Anton shuffling in his own graveyard. And Azusa leaving the battlefield. Poor girl. She just didn't see it coming. But she's not dying in vain as the one devil actually mattered. Yep. And Anton untapping without a board state on his own, drawing a, an island, and now a lone Yorian. I've, I've never seen a sadder Yorian, I, I don't think. Hmm. Little Sky Snake sad. Yeah, Little Sky Snake sad as we move into Canister's turn, taking up Saga to two, ready to produce more tokens, but mostly uh, Canister ready to, I think, cast that Summoner's Pack that's in his hand, picking up Titan, and then winning the game. Hmm. Clean, very clean. Very, very impressive display here of outvaluing your basically deck that is just pure value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as we said earlier, like, outvaluing a deck that's pure value is hard, but outvaluing a sideboarded deck mm. that, you know, brought in all these interactive cards that's it's not even your main plan. Yeah. Is. So, well, great showing by Canister here. Um, that's it for our third match of the Card Market MMM coverage. For the fourth match, if you want to get notified when we upload the fourth match, uh, just scroll down a little bit, subscribe to the channel, and you'll be notified when the final round gets uploaded. And until then, have a good one.